Thank you, Alon. Thank you. Thanks to the advocated, advocate, advocates for silence, uh, Turkey, for inviting me to, to this webinar. I, in my talk, I will discuss the nature of the political regime by putting the emphasis on the support it receives from the masses. And I will start with a quotation by the great Hannah Arendt uh, from her uh, The Origins of Totalitarianism. So here, here she goes. It would be a still more serious mistake to forget that the totalitarian regimes, so long as they are in power, and the totalitarian leaders, so long as they are alive, command and rest upon mass support up to the end. Hitler's rise to power was legal in terms of majority rule, and neither he nor Stalin would have maintained the leadership of large populations, survived many interior and exterior crises, and braved the numerous dangers of relentless intra-party struggles if they had not had the confidence of the masses. Well, uh, it's high time, I think, to acknowledge that uh, Erdogan dynamic now encompasses at least the half of the Turkish population. There, therefore, I would ar argue that in order to make sense of uh, the Erdogan phenomenon and the regime he's building brick by brick, we need to take into account those masses which support him and their motivations as much as Erdogan's personality, his party, his close business circle, Turkey's political history, and the fatal mistakes committed by the former elite. I think that ignoring the masses could be fatal as it would jeopardize the ways and means to combat the monster that is taking place in the Southeast of Europe. So Erdogan's and his regime's fundamental support and source of legitimacy rests on the, this majoritarian constituency. He is pleased to call the national will and the blessed nation, Aziz Millet. And these masses, uh, when uh, taken together with their leader, the Rais, present fascistic characteristics acting in a harmonious and cross-feeding trilogy of leader, masses, and the ideology. Thus, the uh, insufficiencies of Polyanna-ish qualifications of illiberal democracy, smart authoritarianism, elected authoritarianism, right-wing populism, dictatorship even, and for the matter, Erdoganism, as long as these tags make the assumption mm. that when the autocrat or the dictator leaves, the system starts to cure or reset itself to magically become a democracy respectful of the uh, rule of law. Of course, there are parallels uh, between the present regime and its archetypes during the Ottoman Ittihadist era, 1908 and 1918, or the Republican one-party era, 1923-1946. The traces of young Turk and Kemalist authoritarianism are certainly present today. However, something different has happened this time with the remarkable support of the masses, a support that was lacking both with Ittihadists and Kemalists. So those analyses that disregard the masses indirectly whitewash them actually by reducing them to a passive posture acting through vested interests. A major reason to ignore the significance of masses is the assumption that the masses are by definition greedy, shrewd and profoundly materialistic does ready to stop supporting the leader and the regime when the source of wealth will dry down. It, meaning that the support is tactical and would disappear like it emerged. Well, of course, uh, the regime's uh, obviously populist policies worked smoothly until recently 
those who subsist without working through various social security schemes, be it in cash or in kind, are evaluated to be around 16 million citizens, to be exact. There is a very serious study about that. Add to it the regime's clients through a nepotistic public tender system, which benefits a non-negligible cohort of AKP businessmen, add to it the sizable and highly influential crowd of regime's pro propagandists, add to them all those who hedonistically benefit from the mass consumption society that the regime uh, managed and succeeded in creating, this, is, this has become a Ponzi scheme and, uh, the, and involving a sizable part of the population, but, but it's quickly coming to an end. So I won't give the details of the Turkey's economic collapse. The country is in the midst of it. But uh, these analyses conclude that with the economic collapse, things will change dramatically and the masses will, would quit Erdogan. Well, I don't think it's, 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 it's happening so. I think that the Turkish fascism contradicts the utilitarian analysis, which emphasizes the economic motivation as long as it emerged in an environment of economic affluence. We should never forget that contrary to its uh, siblings of early 20th century in Germany or Italy, where economic hardship worked to service the emergence of totalitarianism there. The fact that the Turkish fascism is born in a country which was the world's rising star, both in economic and uh, political terms. You remember 99, the EU process. Uh, the, well, the, this makes Turkey something very peculiar. So of course there were some groups opportunistically supporting the regime uh, but I consider that to de decipher the Turkish fascism, we need more tools than the economic motivation or lack of information or mind manipulation or some uh, the likes is still uh, some people contend. I think Turkish fascism didn't arise from an economic niche, so it won't disappear through economic destitution. So what is then? I sense that shaped with a sense of religious Sunni Islam, of course, belonging, totalitarianism as defined by the regime matches, legitimizes, and empowers the expectations of a totalitarian behavior nurturing at the social level. Well, in-depth analysis, of course, on the futures of this behavior still lacks. The, the, its roots, its sources of inspiration are still quite rudimentary. And the social science is, is really called upon to reflect more and more on this. They may mature with, as long as fascism will, will prevail. But uh, let's consider few hypotheses. So where it is coming from? First of all, the totalitarian behavior dates most probably back to the horrendous mass slaughter of Ottoman citizens during the Armenian genocide of 1915-16. It grows out of a social fabric rotten by massive unaccounted killings and spoliations. Capable of digesting the, the past horrors, the social fabric can indeed today stomach much more. So the aftershocks of 1915 are countless. Uh, despite mass killings and pogroms targeting non-Muslims, Alevis and Kurds, the social fabric not only denies them all, it goes on to nurture a sense of everlasting victimhood for Sunni Muslims, one full of resentment. The irresponsibility and the impunity regarding past crimes develops into a genetic disdain for the rule of law. I think this is key, but also uh, an innate enmity for the other, for the different, powered by, 
by what can be described as masculine aggressiveness. This rotten social fabric, if not schizophrenic, survives only as much as it can devour, ready to even auto-consume as it, it happens today. I think the, uh, we should uh, really ask uh, the, the, uh, the assistance of um, the, the early days uh, observers of the Nazism and, uh, and in particular Wilhelm Reich, who asserts that neither the social class-based explanations of Marxism, for instance, nor the cult of personality of the leader of Führer or Capo, nor the claim that naive masses have been exploited by ill-intentioned politicians, nor the nonsense about how no one knew anything of what was really happening. I'm talking about the Shoah, of course. These are not sufficient, uh, Reich tells us, in understanding fascism. Well, according to, uh, to him, people come to desire fascism and their own repression. So mass ceremonies allow ordinary people to discharge the irrationality that, that springs from thousands of years of suppressed biological urges. The masses, when conditions allow for it in certain periods of history, and this is probably the case for Turkey, find the opportunity to experience the very fascism they desire. So the... Um, Fascism's innate, herd-like, and liturgical aspects are all present in Turkey. The rallies of the regime, for instance, are filled with screaming and fainting, with applauses offered to the leader's verbal lynching of, uh, of others, be it citizens or foreigners. For... And, uh, and one uh, last point. Along the same lines, the regime's belligerence inside and outside the country feeds into fascistic inclinations of the population. Mind you, every foreign military adventure is cheered on with ecstasy by an overwhelming majority. And I am tempted to say that, that we should never forget that fascism is often fed by war. So the Turkish regime cajoles this social fabric, opening up an endless space before its desire of fascism, both internally and externally, a sort of Dar al Harb, Alan, or Dar al Kuf, <laughs> or the house of war. This is where we are in this uh, memorable uh, International Day of Human Rights. Thanks for listening. Thank you.